They say, thank God it's Friday. That's what they say on a day like this. Good morning and thanks for joining us on TVC Breakfast. You're welcome. Let's bring you the news update. The primary health care development agency insists that the country has more than enough vaccines to go around all federal government employees and other Nigerians who are willing to get the jab. This comes after the Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19 directed all federal government workers to show proof of vaccination or a negative PCR test by the 1st of December. Kemi Balogun has this story. Since the declaration of a deadline given by the Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19 to all federal government workers to get the jab or a negative PCR test by the 1st of December, questions on the availability of vaccines in the country have flooded the air. Today, the Primary Health Care Development Agency is putting to rest the agitation with the announcement that the country has enough vaccines to go around. Based on delivery forecast from the COVAX facility and the African Union, Nigeria will have adequate vaccines to cover more than 50% of eligible populations by the end of the first quarter of 2022. In other words, we should not be concerned about the availability of vaccines because the supply chain has been analyzed and we're confident that the vaccines that are required to vaccinate these federal government employees and even more than these specific uh, numbers of uh, government employees has been figured out. Intensity on vaccination to attain herd immunity is the goal, and the Federal Ministry of Health and the agency have both been involved in studies to ensure the safety of the vaccines on the population across all geopolitical zones. The agency has put in place plans to establish mass vaccination sites across the country. The objective of this strategy is to vaccinate a high volume of individuals through sites such as federal government institutions, universities, for example, polytechnic, polytechnics, shopping malls, religious centers, sports events, conference centers, and markets. We work closely with the Nigerian government to support the procurement and logistically moving of vaccines to various parts of the state and with the sole aim of ensuring that each person who is eligible to be vaccinated receives the jab. The agency recently received more than 434,000 doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine and a lot more vaccines are still expected through the AU and COVAX facility within the coming weeks. Kemi Balugun, TVC News, Abuja. All right, that's the foundation of our discussion now. Joining me to discuss this and make sense of it is CEO Occupational Health and Safety Management, Ehi Iden. Ehi, good morning. Good to see you. Good morning, Mike. Great. Good to be here. Right. Now, <coughs> recall that uh, several months ago, uh, the governor of uh, Edo State came up with the resolution, that, or the government of Edo State came up with a resolution that uh, people... Who, don't, who are not vaccinated, who don't have access to some public places like the markets and all of that, and there was a lot of backlash. Now, the federal government has, uh, is coming up with the, a new you know, I initiative or idea that by the 1st of December, uh, every federal civil servant must be vaccinated. Otherwise, they will not have access to their offices. What is the difference between this situation and the situation in Edo State? Uh, le le let me take it from WHO perspective. Mm. This issue is called vaccine mandate. All right. All right. Vaccine mandate has been there, but we should learn to analyze the risk, discuss with all stakeholders before we come to a resolution like this. Mm. And WHO, if you look at the document that WHO published precisely 13th April 2021, and talking about um, ethical consideration and caveat on COVID-19 vaccine is clearly stated out. No government, no institution, no policymaker has that responsibility to force people or even add direct or indirect threat mm. to compel people to take vaccine. The right to vaccine is part of 
human rights and we should understand this mm -hmm. but what we're doing i mean telling nigerians now to show their vaccine card their, their vaccination card before they can access public places if you go back to the to the to the statement of the uh, uh, boris johnson this is what you call vaccine passport which of course uk criticized mm -hmm. if you look at germany they criticize this even america but for us to come and be talking about about vaccine um, mandates and when we don't even have enough vaccine mm -hmm. from from the statistics available we we have o o only vaccinated less than four million people or, or have o less than four million doses of vaccine in the country this morning i heard on the news that uh, we have a new set of of, of of doses coming in put together that will be an average of about seven to eight million altogether with a population of over 200 million people and uh, you hear what, what what was read read out we talk we are talking about government government workers government workers you know take into consideration that that sub-saharan africa is where you have the highest number of of informal workers who are mm. not wage workers mm. you, they, they're, they're more than what you have in the how I many what the percentage of government workers that we have in this country when you having focus and emphasis but come back to this story there's high level of illegality when you see employers or even government start pushing people to take vaccine even in that WHO document that's what you call that's what you call no fault compensation mm. when you're when you're talking about vaccine mandate also also pull out that clause because what of if someone who you vaccinated has maybe vaccine related medical issues mm. How will he be compensated? What, and, what then are you, the and then actions? you compel the you're person not discussing to this. You, When you're discussing yeah. vaccine mandate, these are all the discussions that make up mm -hmm. what you call the vaccine mandate discussion. Mm -hmm. You have to end the people's trust. You have to talk to pe people on, on safety of vaccine and availability. You're not doing this. You're just coming and, and just pushing. You, pu you see, the time is gone when you just come and push this on people. People have access to information right now that this is what it, what, it, what it entails. So I think we should all go back to look at that document as published by WHO. It's on their website mm -hmm. on 13th of April 2021 that talks about the, the ethical consideration and caveat to COVID-19 vaccination. All right. It's all clear. Uh, as, as it is, we, we've spoken to some officials who said that it's a strategy to have more people uh, vaccinate at the end of the day. Whatever strategy that is used, so long as people are getting vaccinated and we have more numbers who are vaccinate, vaccinated, uh, that, is, that is the ultimate uh, goal. Let, let me point you to what's happening in Cote d'Ivoire, which has become one of the, the approaches that most countries are adopting right now. Hmm. You don't sit in Abuja and take, take the job. Many countries tried it and it failed. Cote d'Ivoire right now has become a model that other countries are emulating. Hmm. There was a fun fair made out of this COVID-19 vaccination persuasion. Come out and let the people know what is involved, what is in, you don't see, the truth that when people know what their benefit is in what they are made or told to do, they comply. But you're not even telling people anything. Mm. Oh, make this is compulsory. They made fun fair out of it. I mean, on the street, they made shows. They they deploy mobile mobile uh, vaccination centers to different local, telling people, doing education. Education should precede compliance. But you don't. You're not doing that education. You just say, okay, we want to do this. We want to do this. The public take them along. We are a huge mass of what make up the Nigerian society or Nigerian people. Take the public along. We're not, we're not seeing much education on this. Yes, I'm a believer of vaccination. I mean, we've already taken vaccine before, before COVID-19 came. But let people know what is in this. You're not carrying people along. Create advocacy, education, let, doubts that people have. Two things are following this, this, this issue of hesitancy. Vaccine hesitancy is everywhere in the world. If you look at the, the recent report that came out in July, Russia has the highest level of vaccine hesitancy, followed by America. What are these two key issues following vaccine hesitancy? People are scared of vaccine-related healthcare issues. Secondly, people also have the notion that the, the COVID-19 vaccine clinical trials, it moved too fast. Hmm. How do you demystify this discussion? Let people know, yes, this is what it is, this is what it is, this is what it is. These are the benefits. Yes, you have this here, but in the midst of this, this is what it is. Hmm. But you're not discussing that. And these are the key issues that we should put on our front burners. Hmm. In fact, in a county in, uh, in, in New Zealand, uh, from the report we got, 
the mayor and you know officials of the county came out and decided to declare a week the it, uh, vaccination rally they called it the vaccination yeah, rally yeah where yeah. they went all out you know doing like of a course, jamboree, that's what i just talked about you the know, rally. and then it was a carnival and then on the streets they were you know vaccinating people of course you know it was so they they, they had the flags so and it, it was a carnival. involvement of people and people came out yeah, all out, yeah. and it was recorded that on that week of uh, va the vaccination rally, they had close to 30% increase in the number of people who were That's vaccinated. That's the point I it's just really made. really amazing. Yeah. But let, let's come back to the people themselves now. They, they, when it comes, I, I know people have access to information one way or the other on the social media and out there by interaction and so on. People still have hesitancy here and there. Do, do you still see it as, this time around, information not being enough or people just generally not wanting to vaccinate because it, we, although we we knew there was this conspiracy theories and all of that initially, but but right now, that there is better information. There is more refined information out there right, right now. That's that's where that's where the model that was used in New Zealand mm. becomes very significant. Yeah. You know, okay. take the people along mm. before the vaccine even came up. Came up, a lot of people had information whether they were right or wrong. That's not the issue right now. You have access to the right information. Take the people along. This is this. This should be. This should form the center of our conversation on a daily basis. Let it be on television. All the media use it. Engage people, yeah. not just the government. Opinion leaders, community leaders, engage them because even vaccine centers should be in one of some of those places where you could, this is what it is. Don't just come. Oh, take jab. Let people know what this means to them. Mm. Let people know when we all take this jab collectively, how we can build herd immunity. We're not discussing this. And we just we just okay, if you don't you know we we during the from the military era to this to this era we are in, mm. we've always learned the, to use the, the use of force. Yeah. It's not working anymore. Yeah. We have grown beyond that. So engage people like it happened in other countries that we, which of course we have made clear example of you, you know, there's no vaccine without the vaccination without the people. Mm -hmm. The people need to be fully engaged, fully educated upon persuasion. Mm -hmm. You give them the vaccine. It's about them and, after all. Because it's, it's that right. Mm -hmm. and, and again, I was speaking to somebody yesterday, and she told me she wanted to take the vaccine. Nobody's even talking to you. They just tell you, okay, stretch your hand, just take the jab. No. Mm -hmm. You have to first educate the person, this is what I'm going to do to you, mm -hmm. this is what it is, and uh, upon, upon uh, completion, can I do this? That is the process. Mm -hmm. But we're not doing that. Even, the, even the, those who give vaccines, they are not trained. We just pick nurses from, or whatever, from one, two, three, four places, say, go and give the vaccine. There's a lot more to the vaccine than all that we're discussing. Let's discuss what are the issues that people have as their fears. Mm. Let's let allay those fears. Yeah. Let's let's win their trust and their confidence, mm. and let them be open, open to say, okay, I, I want to come for the vaccine. Like you, 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 you saw how it was doing in New Zealand. People yeah. were willing to, yeah. to, to give to give, yeah. but here we are yeah. issuing our threat. Threat is no longer in use. So the strategy has to change somehow. Sure, we know that in parts of the United States, there are incentives. In fact, there are this, like I think in Virginia. If if you va if you vaccinate, there is some you know little amount of money giving of to course, people here and there incentives. Of course, people organizations you say okay, you just vaccinate, you get one month or two weeks meal ticket. Yeah. So people want to come out to do all those things than just issuing blanket threats. If you all don't right. do this, don't enter my office. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, uh, Hide, for coming on. My very program. pleasure. Thank you very pleasure. much. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Right.